finally made it home after a 15 hour very long flight that made us both a little bit sick. Yeah, weird. The jet lag has meant that we were up super early. and About 2 a.m. <laughs> but we got here at sunrise. It's a bit cloudy, but we got to see a huge cruise ship come in. It just doesn't make sense to me that they're that big. Yeah. Like they're literally huge. It covered the Sydney <laughs> Harbour Bridge. Like yeah. I couldn't see it at the cafe. I couldn't see it right here. It was nuts. But today we have the day in Sydney. We were originally going to be like, let's go do all the touristy things. But I kind of just want to like enjoy being back home again. Mm. We do what we do and that's it. Which kind of seems like how our channel is kind of gearing towards. It's just kind of, we're, we're doing what we want to do. Mm. I know that we're going to eat some pancakes. Yep. Hopefully eat some fish and chips. A lot yeah. of it is food based, I'm now realizing. Hopefully we can check out Bondi at some point. Bondi will mean fish and chips on the beach. If the weather doesn't go bad. Well, let's go check out the armadillo. My only fact that I know about the Opera House, I'm not even sure if it's true, but I'm pretty sure the design of this was won in like a competition. Future Emily will let you know on screen <laughs> whether or not that's accurate, but I'm 99% sure. Because otherwise, why would that be in my brain? Unless it was the Harbour Bridge. But I feel like it was this. I've missed Australian colleague. Make it known that we're just not commenting or talking about the budget today because there's no way we're even going to be close to double what we want to spend. <laughs> yeah. Does that make sense? It's too early. We're already over budget just from our backpack as well. Way over budget, let alone these coffees. Plus then breakfast. We're just not going to talk about it. No one bring it up to me. I don't want to remember this. <laughs> raining pretty heavily now but we are in the rocks which is a very like affluent touristy area of Sydney and I want to tell you a story about how this area became known as like the birthplace of Australia boxing history. I get a little bit excited when I tell stories so be prepared for tangents or for things to not really make sense but hopefully you get the overall idea and gist. <laughs> Jordan's gonna tell me if I've messed up as well because it's just such a cool story. I think this is one of my favorite facts that we've learned all year. So in the 18th and 19th century the rocks wasn't a nice area. It was really, really dangerous. The police wouldn't really want to come here. There was heaps of gangs, brothels, opium dens, and all of the gangs, their like hobby was bare knuckle fighting. So boxing basically. And to become the leader of a gang, you had to beat every single person in the gang in bare knuckle boxing, one after the other. And there were like 40 people in each of these gangs. So to become the head of one, you literally had to like fight 40 people one after the other, which is nuts. And this story is about one of the leaders of one of these gangs or pushes, the Green Push, which I believe was like the Catholic push. His name was Lawrence Larry Foley. So he is obviously really good at boxing if he has become the leader because he's had to beat up like 40 different guys to get that title. He also was really well known for fighting the leader of the Protestant push, the Orange Push I think it was, and they went like 70 rounds and it only stopped because the police came and broke up the fight. Otherwise it would have kept going. And so it's an illegal thing, like you're not really allowed to box or like have fights essentially. There's heaps of betting going on, lots of money changing hands, 
friends. Larry one day is involved in a fight for the Australian Championships. I put that in inverted commas because it was all illegal. So like everyone was calling it the championship, but it wasn't properly monitored or anything. This fight took place on the Victorian side of the Murray River. So where New South Wales and Victoria meet, but on the Victoria side. This fight goes 140 rounds. Everyone there, it's like this, see I'm getting lost again. <laughs> So this fight was like really hyped up. It's like a huge group has gathered to watch these two bare knuckle fight each other for as long as they can. And the New South Wales police hear about it. They come, I think there's like 20 policemen say, but they can't do anything because it's out of their jurisdiction and it's on the other side of the river in the Victorian side. So there's all these people, all these bets going on. The fight goes for 140 rounds. I, I don't know why it stops actually. The fight goes for 140 rounds and Larry wins. He ends up winning about $1,000, which back in the day was like a small fortune. And the, there's reporters there, even though it's an illegal boxing match. And the reporter goes up to Larry and says, how are you feeling? You've just won, how amazing, all this money. And he's like, oh yeah, I'm happy as. And then he goes around and starts asking all of the people that bet on Larry to win. How are you feeling? You've just won your money. And they all start saying, I'm as happy as Larry is. Happy as Larry, the iconic Australian saying is born just from one article. Oh, <laughs> see, it's all over the place. So the police are there watching this fight happen. Guess who was watching the fight? Who was in the crowd watching? One of Australia's most wanted men, Ned Kelly. And the police are all there. They couldn't do anything. They didn't even recognize him. So cool. We got Happy, Happy as Larry and Ned Kelly from one story. Yes. Was that good? Yeah. Yeah. Also, Sydney people, very dedicated. No matter how much it rains, there is always people jogging. They're all so fit and healthy, and meanwhile, we're gonna go eat a bunch of pancakes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is a pretty good change. From torrential rain to a super warm and cozy, beautifully lit pancake house. I'm so excited for this. So we're at Pancake on the Rocks, which is like another interesting story, which I don't think we could do two in one video, but it's got a cool background and has a strong relationship with our hometown. The too long didn't read is there was two brothers that went in a business, a bit of a family issue happened. Now you have Pancakes on the Rocks and you have Pancake Kitchen. Look into it though, because it's quite dramatic. <laughs> I think this is quite iconic to Sydney and to the rocks more specifically. It's also called Pancakes on the Rocks, but I think both of us want bacon and eggs. This looks pretty good. What is it's it? huge. We both got egg, egg Benedict, which comes with a hash brown and a pancake. We've been up for six hours. I'm exhausted. I'm hitting a wall. The jet lag is real. And I was so cocky this morning when I woke up at 2 a.m. There was like a little bit of light coming through our window and I was laying there like, <laughs> nailed it. We just slept through that first night till six-ish. It's gotta be like five or six in the morning. We're not gonna have any jet lag. Like I was so cocky and then Jordan popped his head up wide awake as well. He was like, it's 2 a.m. <laughs> Oh no. How are we gonna stay up? The rule is that we've made with each other is we can't go to bed before 9 p.m. Unfortunately, <laughs> which is 13 hours away. So that's gonna be quite the challenge. But I figure if we can push through this one day, we should be golden. Gonna need more coffees. It has turned into a beautiful day in Sydney. So we're going for a walk along this path under the Harbour Bridge with the Opera House on one side, Luna Park on the other. I'm just having the best time. We really have no expectations for today. And I feel like, not to be negative or whatever, but whenever I've come to Sydney in the past, it's never like hit me how beautiful it is. But I don't know, I guess being the first stop back in Australia after such a long time away, it's really, really nice. I'm just having the best day. I don't know where this goes. <laughs> I also don't really know much about Sydney. We didn't do much planning for today. So we're just doing whatever we want and I want to walk this way. Yeah. Wow. Not too bad. 
<laughs> the rains are here. This is probably the best view of the Harbour Bridge and the Opera House and literally rain, a wall of rain has just hit us. Luckily there's this rock cover. We're taking shelter under. 20 minutes that guy reckons. <laughs> That was a pretty nice spot to wait out the rain and it ended up only being like a couple of minutes. Oh, you are smudged. You just instantly get rain on you. <laughs> that was a very nice spot to wait out the rain and that was only a couple of minutes in the end. So we're continuing our walk and then I think we're gonna backtrack and go into the city and see what that's about, <laughs> I don't know. I'm a bit nervous about the rest of our plans for the day because the goal was to go to Bondi for like sunset, but this isn't really nice Bondi beach weather. <laughs> All right, let's go back. I didn't really know these botanic gardens existed here in Sydney, but the walk is really nice. Highly recommend. And it's like right in the center of the city. Yeah, it's this, it starts right next to the opera house. How nice, you get to walk through botanical gardens with a view of the opera house. Yeah, and lots of bin chickens. So many bin chickens. garden is beautiful. I had no idea we had statues this beautiful in Australia. Turns out it's really really fun to be a tourist in your own country. Now we've got to do a couple of boring things like get a sim card and an SSD so... The rain day continues. <laughs> we spent the afternoon in Vodafone trying to stay awake basically and then we caught the bus down to Bondi Beach instead of going to sleep. Yeah so we are very tired but we are awake which should help with the jet lag going forward but I've never been to Bondi Beach before. It's huge. Mm -hmm. The jet lag's really jet lagging. We got fish and chips though. Yeah. An expensive fish and chips. Yeah, it was $18 for like technically one portion, but I'm sure we can share it. It looks huge. Oh, 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 oh. Nice and salty. Mmm. Yummy. Good chicken salt too. One rainy and windy day in Sydney is complete. I had a really good day, even though the weather's not the best. Oh, it's been an awesome day. I've just been really tired the whole time. <laughs> yeah. I do think we need to have a good sleep because tomorrow we have a huge adventure. I have to drive for the first time in like a year. <laughs> My license is expired, so yeah. It's all you, baby. Yay. Let's go sleep. Yeah. Oh, wrong way. That's better. Like that? Yes. Cheese! You know how I did one workout? <laughs> My arm has hurt ever since, like in a not good way. I think I tore something. 30 years old. 